Well guys, new security system equipment showed up and uh, I had every intention of doing the rest of the custom knife videos that I had, but I have to install this stuff first. It shouldn't take me very long. I'm pretty good at this. Did it for the government for a while. Uh, like, I don't know, six years. So I should have this done, but I will do a video. So there's a video forthcoming. So I will get this stuff all installed. It's not, not gonna be that hard. Uh, hardest part's gonna be linking the security touchpad tablet. Huh, that's cool. Um, to the base that I'm installing right now. That's apparently, from what I've read, is the hardest part. So um, Life Shield's the company I, I've been using. They're, they're really cool. I didn't pay for any of this equipment. Um, they sent it to me. All I had to do, it's the monitoring. So I've been using them for a long time now. They've got really good customer service. They're awesome. We'll talk about that in a different video, but we get this all stuff all installed and we'll, we'll get back to this a little bit later. All right, guys, here we go. I know that I started this yesterday with every intention of finishing this video yesterday, but that security system took longer to hook up. It's an awesome system now that I've got it all in place. Uh, can look at the cameras from my phone, comes with a tablet that controls everything, got a keypad relay that I can move around. It, it's, it's a really good system. It's got its, its own cellular backup, but it's beside the point. That's not what we're here to talk about. We are going to look at this. This is a full custom Chad Nell knife. This is Chad Nell out of Utah. Now, know you guys say from time to time I can be hypercritical. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the, the, the good things about this. This is, this is an awesome knife. This knife is well constructed. The action on it is, it's really good. Action on it's really good. And then we'll talk about the things that I think could have been done better. It's a very expensive knife. As you can see, full, I don't know that you, I don't, I'm not sure if this is Mokutai or Timascus. Doesn't matter. It's expensive. Show scale, pocket clip, and then the lock scale is just titanium. Polished, mirror polished blade. I mean, not a fan of mirror polish. First time you've cut anything with this, it's going to be scratch. But don't worry, because the owner treats like Paperweight. It's on his desk. You don't do anything with it. Um, but if if you're looking at a mirror polish, that's as mirror polish as it gets. So we're gonna turn the camera around and look at it from the other angle, down at it, and we'll talk about it. And then I, I I'll, I'll tell you the the negative things that I see about it. Which I mean, all in all, they're not that many. It's well put together. It's just this is not this is not a knife for me. It really isn't, and uh, a lot of people would disagree with me. I will tell you, it's sharp. Uh, edge on this is really sharp. Uh, this would be one of those knives that I would not think about putting uh, putting one of my edges on until uh, it absolutely needed it. But we'll talk about the, as Nick Chavez says, the good, the bad, the ugly, possibly the unforgivable. Nah, there's nothing. There's nothing unforgivable on this. But yeah, let's get it. Let's get it turned around and we'll look at it. There's, there's just, there's, there's just some, there's just some things that, there's just some things that I always see in every knife. And I know you guys know it and people are like, oh, he just bitches and complains about everything. But let's turn it around and look at it. Guys, I had every intention of doing this out in the yard, but I took it out and then I realized that the, the lighting that comes through my canopy just did not do this knife justice because this is gorgeous. I, I like Timascus and Mokutai. So, let's take a good look at it. That mirror polish. Chad did a really good... There's, there's a lot of time that got put into mirror polishing that. And then keeping crisp lines when you did the... Uh, I mean, here's the thing. To do a polish and then do a satin and maintain crisp lines like that, that takes work. That takes that takes some precision and some effort. Uh, not a fan of mirror polish, but if you're gonna do it, we better do it right. And and when you do it right, it shows. Um, there's a couple people that do it right. Uh, I will say, Jim Skelton, D 
does it right. Uh, as much as it pains me to say it, Anthony Marfione, because I'm not a fan of Anthony's customs. I've seen quality drop off in knives. Um, Anthony Marfione, mirror polish, done right. This, done right. Even up here on the swedge, that mirror polish on the swedge, flawless. It's got fingerprints on it, but flawless. There are no scratches, grit marks, or anything in that. That is all just, it fingerprints like a beast. Let me wipe it off so we can get, I mean, the thing with doing a polish is, it's so hard to do because it's so easy to get grit stuck in your polishing compound, things like that. It's just, that is beyond, that is beyond anything I would want to do. Um, construction, all titanium construction. Action on it, it is not completely buttery smooth, I wouldn't say, but it is, it's really smooth. Got good action, snaps open with authority. It's heavy, it is solid. Um, it's got jimping on the spine, jimping on the flipper tab. Um, so these are the good things. Uh, attractive, yeah, it's pretty attractive. But let's start and talk about some of the things that I really don't find the shape first of all it's it's pretty blah it's pretty nondescript and you know the shape of it is just pretty it's just pretty plain it's just pretty plain and round and it's not that it's i'm not saying it's an unattractive knife it's just it's too bulky and I, when i say it's too bulky let's comparatively I carry some other large knives. It's not that it's any smaller than this. It's just the way it feels in hand. It doesn't have the contours and things that I'm used to in other large knives that I've gotten used to carrying. We'll talk about this in a later video. Um, it's too many straight lines, not enough contours. Um, like I said, I know the guy's not going to carry it, but it is, it's just pretty straight and plain forward. Um, you can see right here, one of the things that, like I said, it is sharp. Ed, the grind is done amazingly well. The hollow on it, uh, is it hollow? It looks, I can't tell. It's too mirrored polished. It looks like a hollow. It's done really, anyway, the grind, yeah, it's a hollow. The grind is done very well. But that, that bothers me. That irritates me, the way it's ground. This satin, satin was done really well. There's no flaws in that. That is, that's just fingerprints. I believe that's fingerprints. We can't, can't be for certain. But at any rate, uh, like I said, titanium construction, milling on this. But there's no, uh, there is no internal skeletonization to lighten any of that. Um, the backspacer, you're seeing there's, there's some good gaps in there. That, that's... One of the things that like I'm critical about stuff because let me explain to you why. Customer paid eighteen hundred dollars for this, but that was on the secondary market. Eighteen hundred dollars, thirteen hundred dollars regular price would have been the maker's price. But the thing is, if I'm paying thirteen hundred dollars for a knife, I don't want any flaws. I'm seeing light between there, so that gives me a visual gap. I can see it from here. You can see it there. It's just little things. I shouldn't pay $1,300 for an item and find flaws. Um, pocket clip, pocket clip. I'm not going to complain about the pocket clip. Pocket clip gets good. I'm not a fan of milled clips, but you know, the flip side of that is you could have polished. That could have been polished really well and made to match the rest of it as opposed to leaving it kind of, uh, kind of dull and, and plain. Um, what else was I going to talk about? Oh, mill chatter. I'm not sure how well it's going to come through here, but where this was milled, there's a lot of, yeah, you can see it. There's a lot of milling machine marks in here that, you know, that could have been easily, that could have easily been cleaned up. Maybe a smoother run, you know, a feed run time. How fast he ran it, uh, maybe a sharper end mill, maybe a different type of end mill. That That's something you don't see it on this side because of the way it was blasted. And well, I guess you can kind of see it here. 
But there's some there's some mill chatter in here. If I'm paying, you know, eighteen hundred dollars, thirteen hundred dollars for a knife, I don't want that. That stuff I don't want in a knife. And then there's this this jimping that is not consistent across. I know it's probably been hand jumped, but just all these little things. And then the lack of a sharpening choil, things like this, where I'm gonna bust up against this this ricasso here. Then here comes as Nick Shabazz would say, the ugly bordering on unforgivable. This is a gorgeous knife, but these are just plain steel screws. These screws could have been anodized. If these were titanium screws, they could have been put in and anodized to match a color of blue that would have matched and been, you know, the, this too. Could have been done in a fashion where it was attractive and matched the, the blue of the Timascus, and then there's this. These are just surface, they're screwed on surface. I think this one might be counterboard, just a, ever so slightly, but this one, just screwed up. Now the knife is centered and everything. I'm not saying that that has anything to do with the knife's construction, but it's just, it sits flush on the Timascus as opposed to much more, much more attractive when that is countersunk down in. It just happened to be the knife that's in my pocket, not trying to compare. But it's just little things like that, that if, if you're paying, see what I'm talking about, the, the, the mill chatter? If you're paying $1,000 to $1,500 for a knife, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be seeing, you, you can see right here, let's see. See how that screw, this, this screw is more proud, sticking out further than that screw, you can just see it. And let's just, to be sure, that is a steel screw. Steel screw, steel screw. So steel screws on something this gorgeous, I mean, for a little bit extra, and I do know that this, the titanium screws are expensive. A little bit extra, and then, then you could have done blue here, bronze here, and then blue and blue on the pivot screw or another color that would have done, you know, something that would have added to the aesthetic beauty of this knife, which like by all rights, it is a beautiful knife. It's just little things like that, that, you know, you're going to pay that much for a knife. I shouldn't have to, now I will say the action on this knife is no problems, no complaints on action, centering, any of that. Um, it's just, it's the little pieces parts. So let's get this turned back around and I'll give you my final thoughts. So here's my final thoughts on this. Is it, is it an attractive knife? It's gorgeous. It is. Is it something I would buy? No. It's not a shape or design that appeals to me. It's not. It's not comfortable in my hand. It's just, it's too, just round and plain. I, I prefer something that's got a better shape to it. But the things that just that irritate me and people are like, I, I don't know what to make of this guy's videos. He just bitches and complains about stuff in every video. That's what this is about. That's what this channel's about. You know, I, I can look at something like this and see, yes, it's an attractive knife. And, and yes, did a lot of work go into this? Oh my God, yeah. This guy did a ton of work on this knife. But then it gets back to just the little final touches the little final touches of doing the things that just make the knife, what do you want to remember for? What do you want to be remembered for? You know, how do you want to be remembered? Do you want to be remembered as, as the guy that did a bunch of work and then just at the very end of it, dialed it in? I don't know. Maybe, maybe that was the, maybe the customer was given options. I don't know. He bought it on the secondary market. So I can't honestly say, but I do know that little things like that, I'm really particular. <laughs> On a $400 knife, I would complain about one screw sticking out further than the other. This is a $1,300 maker price, $1,800 secondary market price. I, I personally don't find that acceptable. When when there's one that sticks out, uh, eyeballing it, laser micrometer eyeball, half, half a millimeter further than the other. Inconsistent jimping, things like that. It's, it is the fine final, final steps, that those final, final brush strokes on that, that just, that tie it all together. And if you're not 
doing all of it, you know, then you probably, I'm not saying you probably should do any of it, but it's just those little things, you know? I just, I feel, when I get something like that, if I had bought that knife, I would feel left out. I would feel let down and I would probably turn around and sell it. That would have been one of the ones when I still collected custom knives that would sell. And that's the thing with the custom knife market. Um, here we have a $1,300 out the door from the maker's price knives, $1,800 secondary market price that I can get the same bells and whistles pretty much nowadays for way less, way less. And I'll, I wouldn't, I'm not a, I'm not a put it on a, put it on a computer desk and use it as a paperweight kind of guy and just flip it while I'm doing stuff. It's, it's gotta be a worker. It's gotta be a usable, that's why I'm not a fan of, that's why I'm not a fan of mill pocket clips. So that's it guys. I don't want you to think I'm just busting on, on Chad now. I, I can appreciate the fact that he put, he put some work in on it. Just that polish, just the polish on that blade is over the top and amazing. That is by far, I think that blade work right there, the, the consistency of that grind with that satin on that polish has got to be up there one of the best blades. And I'm going to say that right now. One of the best blades, the work on that blade is possibly the best I've seen in years. It's just some of the other little things that for me being as particular as I am for the price that this ran at, I just, I can't, I could not, I could not accept that. It would have went back. It would have went, if, if I had been the original purchaser, it would have gotten home and I've been like, huh, look at that. Well, that's going back. That, that would have been, that would have been my response because if I'm spending anything, I'm spending more than $150, $200 on. I find a flaw in it. I find issues with it. it. If it's not the edge, as long as it's not the edge that I can fix on my own, it's going back. So, all right, guys, there's another video coming, maybe two. Uh, I want to get these all done because like I said, I am leaving for the weekend. Um, I have another custom knife that's going to get a much worse lamb basting uh, because I don't truly consider it a custom knife, but we'll talk about it then. Uh, so I'm going to basically do two videos back to back. So Chad Nell, if you happen to ever see this video, I don't want you to think that I'm diminishing the work you did. You did a lot of work. You did amazing work. I just, at the price point, I can't accept flaws. Certain, certain flaws can be accepted. Some cannot and certain things like that, you know? And I mean, like I said, it could have been customer's choice that they chose to pay a little less for um, steel screws, but I'm gonna tell you right now, a set of titanium screws for that knife, one, two, you're looking at about 50 to 60 bucks to upgrade. And at $1,300, what's an extra 60 bucks? So, all right guys. That's it. Take it easy. I will get stuff up. If you like my videos, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, give it a thumbs down. But tell me why you didn't like the video. And if you really like the videos, like I said, always down usually in, well, reversed. So probably down in this corner down here, usually down in the bottom left, is my Patreon link. Uh, you guys take it easy. I will be leaving for Phoenix. I will talk to you guys later. For you guys, probably in a couple hours. For me, it's going to be momentarily because I'm just going to grab the next knife and run right into it. So, okay, guys, take it easy, and I'll see you next time.